Hello and welcome to another one of my videos and this video I'm putting out because someone commented on uh, my video earlier saying that he wanted to learn from my experiences so I'm putting out a video on seven mistakes I made as a professional dealer it's really strange calling myself a professional dealer I haven't really said it before but it's kind of catchy um, essentially I bought and sold coins for a living but I never really considered myself a professional. Um, I just did it because I enjoyed it and I was good at it. But I didn't really have a shop or anything like that. I, I had a Facebook page um, that I used to buy and sell on, that I still buy and sell on. So yeah, let's, let's get into it. So seven mistakes I made as a professional dealer. So number one was buying coins that I didn't really understand. You can see there's a, a concoction of coins on the table. Um, these are all examples. So I bought these along with plenty of other coins that weren't gold or silver. I just didn't understand the market. Um, I bought them. It was a relatively inexpensive mistake. I still have them. I guess I could make money on some of them. I bought for a really good price these. But it just didn't make sense for me to buy because I was just hitting and hoping. You don't make money by getting lucky. You get money by being skilled and by putting yourself in the right place at the right time. And I just thought, yeah, I can learn from this, I can build in it and I can go into new markets. I did the same with with other coins. So mainly base metal, I've got a load of base metal here. So these are all nice, older ones. I've got a load of international base metal. It just didn't really work for me because I didn't understand the market. So you're never going to make money in the market you don't really understand. And I wasn't interested enough to try and understand it either. It didn't excite me as a coin dealer. I like my, my gold and silver. So you kind of need to know what your thing is and to build upon that. So number two is uh, overpaying for coins. Now that I've done many times in my life. Um, it gets me every time. I don't know why I do it. I do it less and less as I've progressed as a as a dealer i am a, a part-time dealer now like my life took me in other areas and i just got a bit fed up with a lot of things to be honest um but yeah concerning overpaying coins i did dumb stuff like uh buy sight unseen uh so i used to buy from somewhere where it said puff mint this was before the kangaroos i think i think they used to label the kangaroos as something else and I'd jump on everything, hoping it would be a rare Luna. So I ended up with, oh, a rare Kookaburra. You know, I ended up with a load of stuff that I overpaid for. And realistically, I'm never going to make my money back. I should have sold them. Don't know why I didn't sell them. Um, I've got no problem taking a loss on things. But for whatever reason, I just kept them. So this one's the worst. Why, oh, why, what was I thinking? You know, what I should have done and something I do now is I tend to phone up. But it's not fear of missing out why I overpaid. Because I could have just picked the phone up. You know, sometimes you overpay because instinctively you want to jump on that opportunity. But you kind of learn as a professional coin dealer that those opportunities present themselves day after day after day. And you need to be selective about what you buy. Otherwise you're going to make losses. Stupid trades. That's number three. So the third mistake I made was making stupid trades with people. I really hope the person who traded these with me is not watching. Um, it wasn't a stupid trade because I didn't get them for a fantastic price. It was a stupid trade because they're so niche. I've got nowhere to sell them. Oh, I haven't found a buyer just yet. Theoretically, you can buy stuff. You can buy things cheap enough that you can get them off the books with relative ease. For whatever reason, I just haven't been able to do that i kind of snapped them up because i like them myself which i will cover later on so yeah it was a stupid trade because although i bought for a good price i just haven't been able to sell them and i don't really use ebay to be fair i also done a few trades where i've ended up overpaying you know, I did a trade with a friend of mine and it was an awful trade for both of us. I don't know why we indulged ourselves in it. It was an awful, awful, awful trade. We both lost money. However you diced it, it we should have just cut our losses. 
uh, it would have saved us some time and energy. Number four, buying too much of one coin. Those who know me know I have a ton of these. I end up buying 250 of these bad boys. Why? Um, the rationale at the time, I, I didn't really buy these as a dealer. I bought these a very long time ago before I was a professional dealer. Um, but it is a mistake I've kind of repeated where something works for me and I get a load in. But you always need to try and stay on top of the market. And if you're buying semi new me, you need to be, you well, you need to either be risk off, so buy as many as you can afford for it to fail, or you need to, well, it kind of covers the second point I was going to make. Um, you need to be able to afford to sit on them for a few years. The rationale for this was I'll buy them. They should do well. They're the first year with the 30 gram. It's a fantastic design, and come 2020, I'll have enough to put a deposit on a house. That never worked. You know, forward planning doesn't always work like that. And it's something that I learned massively over time that there is profit in these things. But sometimes the buy and hold strategy only works for certain things. In terms of semi new me, I wouldn't do it again. I wouldn't buy 250 of these and sit on them because selling them is really difficult. You either sell them in one go at a massive discount or you've got to sell them individually to collectors. And it's it's hard. I've got about 130 left, by the way. Um, I've just been pinging them off when the prices have been strong. Number five, doubling down on past successes. These these are not gold or silver. Um, I didn't make the, state, the mistake of not understanding the market. There wasn't a market. The, the plan for these was to trailblaze. And I got them in. I ended up buying about £300 worth, I think it was. And I sold them within the afternoon. And I thought, fantastic. I will, I will put a lot of money into this because I made 40% markup. I did very well. Uh, I sold them to a dealer at 40% markup as well. He subsequently got back to me two weeks later like, ah, oh, Sean, what have you sold me? What is this crap? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He's like, we've taken them to a few fairs and we can't sell any of them. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, Okay. And I've kind of been stuck with these ever since. So I've got about a thousand pound worth of uh, these Korean coins. Uh, the packaging I kind of made up myself. I was given like a the format. Some of them I've done, others just left in the box. So yeah, I doubled down on these thinking I'd have the success of making 40% on coins by bringing these. In my mind, I like them. I've had a few arguments over them because of where they're from. It's not for everyone. Um, I can understand why people have their reservations. I, I do get it, you know, but I just sell coins. So some perspective, really. Point number six, buying stuff I like. This also falls into silly trades and paying too much. So you've probably seen this. I bought these not so long ago, pre-virus. I wonder if my videos will be pre-virus and post-virus. But uh, I overpaid just because I like them. And when I buy stuff I like, I don't tend to get rid of them. So, for example, anyone knows me, knows I have these. These are some of my favourite coins. I don't think I'll ever part with them because I'm trying to build them, build a set for my mother. I don't think I'm going to finish it, to be fair. I can't find them. If as a coin dealer I cannot find coins, there's a, there's some real issues. <laughs> you know, fantastic Russian coins. If anyone ever sees any of these in fantastic shape... Let me know. The pricing's got to be right though. Like I'm not paying stupid, stupid money just to fill the set. And this goes back to buying stuff I like because you tend to pay more. You kind of get suckered in. You, you want to buy something that is really cool. But realistically, you there are so many opportunities to buy coin. There really is. Um, I get offered opportunities most days. You go on the groups, there's coins. You go on eBay, there's coins. You know, you go to coin dealers, coins, coins, coins. You know, it's there's not a problem finding coins. So you need to be selective about when you buy and you've got to do your research and buy for the right price. So point number seven, and last on my list, this isn't in any particular order, by the way, um, is taking things personally. There's been occasions as as a coin dealer and this isn't just about being a coin dealer this is in life like i'm 
I've got a very just sense of who I am. You know, I want my life to be built on fairness. And I take people at face value and it's kind of caught me short on occasions. But I'm also prone to losing my rag every once in a while. When I lose my rag, I lose my rag. And you can't do that as a coin dealer. You've got to be professional and you've got to try and and cater to everyone. And it, it's hard. Like I think there's been occasions where I've tried to do my best and I've tried to be fair and I felt like people were taking the piss out of me. And I've taken it personally. And again, it's it's not personal, it's just it's just business. Nothing more, nothing less, you know. There's been occasions where the person who I thought um, was taking advantage of me, they've been one of my best customers. They've come back, they've been nothing but polite after I, I said a few things. But you cannot, you cannot consistently make money if you find offence at most things. There's going to be occasions where people don't offer you what you think it's worth. And that's okay. You just say to them, I'm sorry, I think it's worth more. And they're either going to accept that or they're not. You know, the response might be, well, well, screw you. That that happens, you know. But you need to you need to react in a responsible way, in a way that is professional, in a way that doesn't burn any bridges. I've burned a few bridges in my time. There's, there's bridges that I wish I hadn't been burned. Some of them I felt were my fault. Some of them not so much my fault. And it's all part of growing up and being a more rounded uh, professional, coin dealer, person, you know. it's. But yeah, I, I really wish there's a few things I would have changed or I would have done differently. But that's just what that's what has made me as a person. And that's OK. You know, I was never going to get everything right from buying and selling and I was never going to handle every situation right. But as long as you try your best and you stand true to what you are, that's cool. So yeah, they're, they're my seven mistakes I made as a professional dealer. I hope that it does kind of help some people. It's not meant for entertainment purposes. You know, I will drill down in more depth for my Australian friend at some point uh, concerning some of the experiences that helped me to to make money. It's just very difficult to, to, to blurt it all out. You know, I've got to think about it in a structured way that kind of helps people rather than just jumping from one idea to the next um if you like the comment uh, if you like the content please like comment and subscribe and if you don't then tell me why is there anything you would add to the list have you bought and sold coins personally and come up with mistakes w what would they be so take care guys bye